Hello, Iman. Hello again. Oh. <laughs> <laughs> no, no, no way. This time last year was the last time we filmed for YouTube. Correct. And now look at us. Different location. Big day over there. Gazzy on our eyes. Globetrotters. Globetrotters. What's the biggest change since a year ago? I don't think anything's changed. You don't think anything's changed? I think some things have changed. Okay, what's changed for you? Well, from an outsider looking in, you've become a lot funnier, which I'm very proud of. You've started to show your personality more. I don't like that. I'm very proud of you. No, no, I love it. I love it. I have a running joke with Iman. Well, it's not really a running joke with Iman. It's a running joke with myself about Iman. <laughs> that you are funny for four times of the year. Mm -hmm. But so far, you've, you've been funny a handful of times. So I'm really proud of that. And people are starting to notice that your fans, your audience are like, I love to see Iman just like a bit more goofy and stuff. Yeah, I don't like that. I let it slip. I had a Freudian slip a couple times on short form. Mm-hmm. Mm -hmm. Never again. No, we, we love to see it. Are you going to offer me some big day? Would you it's like just a big sitting day? There. Yes, what and I would like you to hand pour it. Oh, and since you're fasting currently, mm -hmm. I will have both. Both? Yes, please, sir. <laughs> <laughs> All right. What do you want first, lime or watermelon? I'll do the watermelon first. Mmm. Okay. Delicious. I don't know why. I feel like I'm on the fucking Oprah Winfrey show or some shit. That's perfect. <laughs> so how are you really? No, I'm <laughs> no we're not doing this. <laughs> I'm kidding. No, no, no. Do you think there's such thing as being too comfortable? With your partner? With your partner, with your life, yes, definitely. But yeah, specifically with your partner. Yeah, 100%. I, for me personally, I would never want to be comfortable mm -hmm. with my partner. If I ever got like... I'm not talking like a little like chubby. I mean like fat for an extended yeah. period of time. Like I would hope my partner would leave mm -hmm. me. And everyone who says, oh yeah, I unconditionally love that person. Like that's a load of horse shit. Cause I can tell you right now, if they became a weed smoking video game addict and piled on an extra hundred kilos, yeah. you would leave them. Unconditional love is something that's reserved for your mother. Like so your, your, your mom is the only one that your, kind of your mother unconditional. will unconditionally yeah. love you even if you are a weed smoking uh, video game addict and you mm -hmm. gain 100 kilos your mom will still love you your wife should not because you actually lied to her because mm -hmm. the person she went into a relationship with you went back on that mm -hmm. so you actually lied about who you are mm -hmm. it's not the, uh, as in they don't want to stick around or this that it's just you are not the same person that they agreed to we get too, into a relationship yeah. with and that happens a lot the whole uh, this isn't the man I, I fell in love with yeah Is there like something that you crave in people? Because thinking about this circle that you have, okay? Mm. We're all super, super different. And obviously for you, your circle's a bit interesting because it's your, your employees, mm. but it's also your close, close friends. And mm. like, we are all so different individually. Like what's the one thing that you get attracted to in a person? I'd say for me, loyalty. Mm. Like, I know I said unconditional love, it, that it doesn't exist except for your family but for me that's because unconditional love is like people throw that around way too lightly it's yeah the there's nothing stronger on earth yeah but loyalty every single person i've kept in my life is one of those people where if i hadn't have kept them in my life on my deathbed even if i hadn't talked to them in 40 years i would have thought back and gone i wonder whatever happened to them mm. and people don't really realize it and i'm sure you've seen it how people come in in contact with our circle yeah and it's like a drug they've never seen such a cohesive unit and they've never seen like a dynamic in a group like what we have mm -hmm. and that's because as i said i just feel like every person around me is like some character in a movie they're just mm -hmm. there's just those characters in life mm -hmm. that you, you can't forget them and i decided rather than forgetting these people let me just keep them around um oh, fuck i had a great question it's just flown away <laughs> if I started dating a guy and you met him, you didn't like him, would you expect me to listen to you? How would you navigate that? If I really liked a guy, but you, you were like, he is not the one for you, I can't stand him. And what would he have to be for you to not stand him? Questions, questions. I think, listen, I don't expect you to listen to me. I think it's in your best interest if you do, because I yeah. will, any sort of 
masculine relation you've had in your life, I've always been right about. Ooh. <laughs> okay. <laughs> Since you were 16, I've called the end of your relationships to the month. Oh, not to the month. Let's not exaggerate. Basically to the month. I'm just putting my phone on silent. Sorry. Cheeky screenshot. <laughs> <laughs> I, did, I didn't mean to. It was just awkward. So yeah, no, I don't expect you to listen to me. I tell you, mm -hmm. even if you didn't want to hear it, because mm -hmm. to me, that's what a friend does. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Okay, but what would he have to be for you to not be able to stand him? Someone who challenges you slightly. Mm -hmm. I think for you, I would never want you to date like someone with my character. That would be... That would be, that would be a f <laughs> disaster. My hair would fall out. I would be 10 kilos underweight, which wouldn't be a bad thing to be honest, but uh, I would hate that. <laughs> so I think for you, you definitely need someone a lot more on the emotional side. Not a lot more on the emotional side, but slightly. No, a lot more than me. Yeah, yeah. Just in tune a little <laughs> bit. <laughs> it would be nice. I'm just going to well, dibble dabble between flavors yeah, for now. Double dip. Why not? Double dip. Mmm. You should do watermelon lime next. <laughs> Are you Taste it. <laughs> should we do rock, paper, scissors, but with a bet? With a bet? Yeah. No, you're good at rock, paper, scissors. No. What? No. I you remember you're good at rock, paper, scissors. Pussy out of it. Okay, should we just do best out of three just to do best out of three? No, because you're still going to win. I know you're good. Rock, paper, scissors, shoot. Woo! Rock, paper, scissors, shoot. Rock, paper, scissors, shoot. Woo! <laughs> How does it feel to... So naturally, females are obviously more intuitive than men, okay? Yep. And apparently, males in the workspace, like there was some statistic that men are trying to channel their inner intuition and femininity more so that they can work on making incentive decisions in the workspace. And where did you hear that report? I heard it at my female founders panel. Of course you did. <laughs> <laughs> We're talking about this on a podcast now? I thought that was interesting. Studies? I just wanted to give you guys a little fact. Fact of the day. Yeah, that's not a fact. All right, what would you give a guy who is like just a normal dude, right? What advice would you give him to level up their life and attract their dream partner? You know, the thing is with me, Iman, and this is, this is where we're different, is I base a lot on if someone's just a decent person. For me, if you're like a decent person, that Tomorrow, kind of already gives respect. you browning points. No, for sure it gives you browning points, but respectfully, you you know many decent guys, you've never gone on a fucking date with them. So yeah, because the, I'm not attracted to them. So cut the crap. So let's. I'm not attracted to them. So how do you become attracted to them? Because well, I know you, you're not attracted to looks. I am, though. No, but I've seen the things you've dated. And <laughs> the things I've dated? Are you having a giggle? Every guy I've ever dated has been super hot. That's not true. But. Who hasn't been hot? The only one who hasn't been hot is. Girls don't necessarily need the guy who's the most attractive. They just no, want definitely to be not. attracted by him. Yeah, well, that's so. that's all about charm. Knowing okay. how to speak to a female, knowing how the female mind works. I'm not saying be toxic, definitely mm. not. But understanding, you know, charm and humor. And I'm telling you, if you can make a girl laugh, immediate panties are wet. Like, you have to have some humor. You have to not take yourself seriously. And also, you have to have your own style. Like, no offense, I'm not going to date an Iman Gadzi wannabe. I'm just not. Mm. I don't like it. So, the guy's definitely got to have his own style and not trying to morph into someone else that he's not. Mm. I think that's really important. What do I get if I do 20 push-ups? What do you want? What, what's on the options? T try your luck. Shopping spree. How much? I wanna, you know, I don't like taking advantage. So maybe a pair of shoes. One pair of shoes. One pair of shoes. If you can do 20 proper push-ups. If push -ups. I can do 20 push-ups, I wanna get the, the Travis ones that I've been wanting for a really long time. What? <laughs> <laughs> That's not a push-up, Amara. <laughs> <laughs> Four, 
15. 15. No, that doesn't. Ah. 16. 16. 17. 18. 18. 19. No, that doesn't count. <laughs> Share your legs, Amar. <laughs> <laughs> I just need some big day. This is a great ad. This is a great ad. This is a great ad. <laughs> you know, you're oh, only just... able to do that because of the big day. It must have been because of the, the watermelon lime concoction. <laughs> <sighs> I've never done 20 push ups in a row before. What's the most you've ever done? Like 12. Well, I guess you still haven't even done one. <laughs> what? Can we, can we make an edit out of that? <laughs> Have you ever had a moment where you just be like, I can't f stand Amara? <laughs> uh, yeah, sometimes. When and why? You don't do it as much. It used to be a bit of a pick me. <laughs> what? <laughs> that's a joke. No, that's serious. How was I a pick me? With the guys. With the guys? Yeah. You're a lot with guys. What do you, you mean I'm a lot? They, they're, they're on my ass 24-7. No, no, because you let them. You love it, Iman. You totally entertain, encourage it. When I'm with you guys, it's like I'm on the hot chair 24-7. It's like I have five brothers that I never asked for, never wanted in my face Did, the you, whole didn't time. Didn't you literally ask to come to Cape Town? <laughs> 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 I specifically remember you saying, even if there's no other females <laughs> present, I would still like to come. <laughs> Aren't you happy I'm here? Over the moon. Can't you tell? <laughs> yes, I can tell. You know, when, when fans reach out to you and say how much you've changed their life and how much you mean to them and how much you've helped them, etc. Like, has it gotten old for you or do you still get affected the same way as like the first fan that ever came up to you? I think I've definitely gone desensitized to it. But to be honest, I got desensitized to it in like five years ago. Mm -hmm. When it's different is when it's in person. Yeah. When it's in person, it's a different it's experience. Still, always special to this mm -hmm. day because mm -hmm. you like it's a real human in front of you. And yeah, you can, you can actually see the emotion. Because mm -hmm. it's very easy to say things over texts, mm -hmm. but when you're in person with someone and you actually genuinely see what it means to them, mm -hmm. yeah, nothing compares to that. Mm -hmm. Love that. Amazing. Oh. Pleasure. Pleasure is always. <laughs>